Thank you very much for stopping at our post now. I'm Felix and I present the joint work Julius, Mauricio and I have done on non-linear interlinkages and the key objectives among the Paris Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals. We see that there are currently two major challenges in our world. There's on one side climate change and what you see here is average temperature over four years compared to a baseline from the year 1950 and how the temperature increased at different regions of the world. I show you here all the data to the end of, two, of the 2000s and up to now 2019 actually and what we see is that there's a massive increase in temperatures especially in regions in the north that has never experienced such high temperatures. We also see a second major challenge currently that's around poverty, hunger and inequality. And that goes from children not having enough to eat, not getting the nutrition they need, to classrooms being totally overloaded, having one teacher teaching students all the age from 5 or 7 to 15 and not providing the equipment as for example basic notebooks or a table and a chair to write on for the students. Of course we are not the only people who know of these challenges and the United Nations try to address them with two major agendas. There's on the one side the Paris Agreement that came into for 2015 at COP21 in Paris and tries to limit global warming to 1.5% above pre-industrial levels. On the other hand, there are sustainable development goals, which are 17 goals that encompass everything from no poverty to energy to infrastructure to life on land and peace, justice and strong institutions. What we asked ourselves in the study is how these two agendas are actually interlinked. So when there is a certain policy or certain action trying to address some of the object objectives in these two agendas, for example reducing poverty SDG 1, it has most likely some effect on the other objectives as well. And that's something that lots of governments and large, large corporations um, give as a reason why they are currently hesitating to implement more policies to improve on these objectives because they don't know the negative consequences. So what we did to kind of move the first step towards solving the problem is computing a partial distance correlation that's a non-parametric measure of dependence. What means non-parametric? It's um, non-linear, what is probably the most important factor of that, and takes our uh, finds correlations, finds dependencies that um, have changed over time. So all of you know most like the, the basic linear correlation what has, has been published by Pearson many years ago, uh, but that is just a matter of linear dependence. So as soon as you find, um, for example, a relationship that is, can be seen as y is equal to x squared, we have a linear correlation of nearly zero, although we find that they are very, very strongly dependent, of course. And that is something we want to take into account, also because we see the SDGs together with climate change as a complex system, and a complex system has, by its very definition, a nonlinear connection, nonlinear interlinkages between its uh, components or its variables. So the partial distance correlation is a measure between zero and one. And zero means they are independent, and one means they are very strongly dependent. Actually, one is a, is a signal of that they are linearly dependent. And we have computed the partial distance correlation because we wanted to um, define edges, lines, connections between these 18 variables that correspond only for the influence between these precise two objectives and kind of filtering out all the inference that come from, from the other. So what you do in practice is that you take 
For example, here SDG 12, responsible consumption and production with climate change, here's that symbol on the right bottom, and compute the um, distance correlation conditioned on any subset of the remaining 16 variables. And then you can, when you do that, you have all kind of different potential influences filtered out that come within that set of the 18 SDGs, of the 18 variables, 17 SDGs plus climate change. Uh, of course, we, at that stage, with that analysis, we can't take into account influences from outside of the SDGs, for example, uh, like a severe war or something like that. Um, but this is at the moment um, the best we can do. And I think it's already very helpful to have that analysis. What we get in the end is then a graph, or we see it as an undirected weighted graph with some vertices that are the nodes and some edges, which are the connections between the different SDGs. We have not only done that for the world, we have done that for different regions. And there are ones, um, continents or subcontinents, like here, for example, Eastern Africa, but we also have taken the groupings that are more economic economically motivated, for example, low-income countries, high-income countries, Global South, Global North, and so on. Uh, for Eastern Africa, we see a very strong dependence between SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation, and SDG 14, exactly as is SDG 15. And as I said, that's just an undirected, so we don't know what is cause and effect. But then with some policies of investigations, you can actually um, at least um, give a guess what the direction in this, in this relationship, the causal direction in this relationship is. Um, that you can do for, for lots of others, uh, lots of other connections, for example, SG16, what is peace, justice, and strong institutions, with SG17, partnerships for the goal. Um, in other regions, here in the Global South, we see slightly different dependencies. Uh, what sticks out is especially the strong connection between SDG 12, uh, responsible consumption and production, and climate change. But of course, although as before, clean water and sanitation has lots of different strong, uh, different connections that are all quite strong. When we look into high income countries, we um, see a slightly different picture because. Um, here, industrialization and infrastructure in SDG 9 is quite central, or not central, is quite, um, is quite strongly connected to partnerships for the goals. And there are other connections between um, affordable and clean energy, for example, to life on land, SDG 15. In least developed countries, we have something similar to what we have seen in the Global South and in Eastern Africa, that there is a very strong connection from. Uh, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation, to SDG 14 and 15, which are both uh, more environmentally motivated. But also what is quite interesting is SDG 17, partnership for the goals closely related to SDG 3, uh, good health and well-being. What is the second question that we asked ourselves in this study is which of these variables are actually most important? And I want to first of all tell you how we define importance. When we see all these networks that we have uh, just shown you previously, uh, see as undirected weighted graphs, we can use some graph theoretic measures um, which are all called centrality. So there's a most basic measure is a degree centrality where you just um, sum up how many different connections each node has and in this case because we have a weighted graph you also uh, you actually only sum up the weights of each node having to all others. We did not do a simple degree centrality, we went a level beyond and computed the eigenvector centrality because we wanted to have each node centrality, each node's importance measured by um, its own importance plus the importance of, some, of the direct neighbors. So that gives us then a relative measure and does not only say that node is important because it has lots of connections to many others and lots of 
heavily weighted connections, it has actually all the connections to other nodes, to other SDGs in climate change, which are also very important to lots of others. What we get here then is, um, here simply on the y-axis, um, an eigenvector centrality measure, and on the x-axis we have the different SDGs plus climate change. Um, and then what we see here for all countries for the world is that clean energy is very important together with clean, um, clean water and sanitation. We have all the quality education being very important and then closely related um, are SDG 14 and 15 which are both the environmental measures. Of course we have done that for the same groupings of countries as, um, as we have done the networks for and I just show you here three of them. What is quite impressive for the least developed countries is that clean water and sanitation really is by far a very um, much more important than most other SDGs. And um, that study we have actually done uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic, but it actually really undermines that um, hygiene and sanitation and clean drinking water is very, very central to uh, progress on lots of other SDGs. And there are some studies by the Sustainable Development Solution Network of the UN that have just uh, published that I think a couple of weeks ago, um, taking into account or trying to compute the influences of the COVID-19 pandemic on the SDGs. And they found that most, actually nearly all, I think, SDGs have had a severe negative impact um, by the pandemic. And what we found here is that clean water and sanitation is very, very central actually just undermines that finding. For Middle Africa we have a slightly different picture. There is now quality education number one, uh, but then also uh, the partnership for the gold and clean water and sanitation among the top three. As a third region we will show you here is North America. Again we see clean water and sanitation as the most important node. But then we have also the partnerships and actually gender equality and education being closely related to each other, which is for a developed region like North America, um, yeah, not the not not the best result they uh, they probably hope to have. That was actually all. I'm very happy to take some questions in the live session, or you just send me an email, and I'm happy to have then another call with you. Thank you very much.